Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would do a book haul at But It Is All Murder She Wrote Books. So I'm always on the lookout for Murder She Wrote Books and most of my collection has actually come off vintage. There's a couple of people that will sell them now and again and I managed to just find the right time where someone was uploading pretty much all of their collection and um, I think they had a total of about 16 to 18 books and I think I got about 13 of them um, they were selling them from like between one to three pounds I think per book and so I bundled them together got a discount and then I think for all of this including postage I think I paid about 17 pounds for so for 13 books that's pretty good going um, they vary in condition um, nothing's like super bad and like icky um most of it is like red but good and um, there is a couple sort of better standouts out of them so yeah all of these i'm gonna jump in um possibly read you the blurbs and yeah let's just have a little murder she wrote cozy haul um so i'm gonna start with the two hardbacks and actually i have a document on my computer that i've printed off and it's basically a murder she wrote checklist if i can find out how to publicly share that um, i'll leave a link down below if the link is not down below and you are interested though pop me a message um i can try and like email it to you maybe um if i can't figure it out um but yeah so what i do is I highlight all of the ones that I have in my collection and I keep a photo on my phone and then I tick if I've read them or not so I know if I are in my collection and I've just not read them because if I've got them and I've not read them they're not going to be on my Goodreads and this is just really easy if I'm out and about and I see a book in a shop by chance um, unlikely or if something comes up on my phone I can see if I've already got it um, because there has been a time where I purchased on Vinted and then I realised I actually had it and had to cancel the order. Um, so yeah, let's jump in. The first one is Murder on Parade and this is actually covered. Um, someone has covered this book and I think they got it, by the looks of it, they got it from Better World Books, which obviously take leftover library books because this is from withdrawn from the Rotherham Public Library um which is interesting i wonder if it just wasn't um being read i don't know because it looks like they've kind of ripped out maybe where well, you would stamp the book out um and then inside it says rotherham library service um and then it says 2008 1995 so they obviously sold off some of their books um so yeah this one is um, covered I don't know if I could yeah I could probably take the cover off which I might do because I don't really need the cover in my own collection um, but yeah this is what it looks like so the hardbacks tend to be on the later edition books um, and this one says the town of Cabot Cove so instantly like because it's set in Cabot Cove and that's where I prefer them to be set um, so it says the town of Cabot Cove annually hosts an elaborate 4th of July celebration and this year is no exception. Between historical reenactments, parade floats and the fireworks show, the community is abuzz with activity and enthusiasm. No one is more enthusiastic than the town's newest resident, corporate mogul Joseph Lennon. He's been waving his wealth around ever since he set up his headquarters on waterfront property, influencing both business and politics in his desire to give Cabot Cove an unwanted 21st century makeover. Lennon's insistence on financing a fireworks extravaganza to rival New York City's has caused a bit of a stir among many folks who feel that the town is losing its identity. The July 4th festivities begin and end in successful, spectacular fashion. But before the night is over, joy turns to horror when Lennon's lifeless body is discovered floating in the water outside his office complex. So really interesting. I think this would be a lovely summer read. July, if you're reading it around July 4th, very seasonal, very appropriate. So um, I'll be excited to read that one. Uh, the next one is Death of a Blue Blood. This sounds more like set in London. Um, let's see if I can have a little read. Um, Jessica Fletcher and her friend Scotland Yard Detective Inspector George Sutherland are invited to attend a New Year's Eve 
ball at Custer Castle thanks to her British publisher. So this one's set in the UK, um, she's at a party that her publisher is being held and the body of the lady's maid is found in the garden. And so obviously I guess we have Jessica and the Scotland Yard detective trying to figure it out. Um, a midnight, as midnight beckons at the ball the next night the Earl offers a toast complete with fireworks but the merriment crashes to a halt when he falls ill and dies. Apparently poisoned and the number of suspects with a grudge against the Lord of Manor sprouts like English ivy. Let's try and get through these a bit quicker because otherwise it feels going to be a long video. Um, this is Madison Avenue shoot and so he gather. This is guest in New York. Um, so this one includes her nephew Grady. He asks his aunt Jessica to visit him in New York. This one seems kind of very generic. She's in New York and um, soon finds herself not just a witness in a murder case but the only one who can uncover the killer. So this one sounds very sort of high stakes in New York, Grady's big firm, um, and there is a murder. The next one is Coffee, Tea or Murder, and again this looks like it's set in the UK. One Jessica is on an inaugural flight from Boston to London, um, and she's going to reunite with Inspector George Sutherland again. Um, but the reunion hits turbulence when George is called to the airport to investigate the apparent murder of Wayne Silverton who has set up this new airline that she has flown the inaugural flight on and it says now Jessica's gonna have to catch a killer before she can catch a flight home so around an airport that I think will be quite interesting um, we have design for murder uh, again this looks like maybe set in New York so this one's set in New York and she's about to attend a debut show for a new designer um, who's introducing his new sort of designs um, and by the looks of it it says two models two deaths their only connection the designer uh, Jessica's crime solving instincts are put to the test as she sorts through the egos the conflicts of interest the spiteful accusations and the secrets all while keeping an amorous detective at arm's length bit of romance maybe so that's a fashion show in New York the next one is killing in a koi pond and why do I feel like I have this? This looks familiar, but maybe not. So this one, um, it says, after traveling to a mystery writers conference, Jessica decides she's under vacation and takes a train to Columbia, South Carolina to visit her old college friend, um, who has recently married her third husband. Um, they've moved to an opulent historic home and Jessica is ready for a week of shopping, gossiping and relaxing. But the morning after she arrives, Jessica discovers her friend's husband face down in the koi pond so that is what that one's about so more of a southern feel to it the next one is close up on murder um this is um looks like it's set more around the the dramatics and the theater it says cabot cove is being invaded by hollywood one of Jessica's oldest novels is being adapted into a big budget movie. The producer has decided to shoot on location since the book was loosely based on a murder that shot Cabot Cove several years earlier. Unfortunately, everyone on the set seems to have a hidden agenda. A novice director wants his shot at big time. Um, and then a body is found on set, obviously. Uh, so this sounds a bit like there was an episode of um, Murder, She Wrote where a film set comes um to look around the town and interview jessica um so it sounds like it has slight elements from that maybe next we have three strikes and you're dead this one sounds like jessica has um gone to visit her friends and watch their son play in a um, aa league baseball game and it turns out that her friend's son's bitter rival gets killed. Jessica finds it hard to believe such a fine young man would wreck his life in a moment of anger. And when she starts looking into the case, she finds that for some people, baseball is more than just a game. So the next one is set um, in Alaska, and this is called Panning for Murder. Um, sounds very exciting. Uh, so uh, it says Jessica plans to enjoy a relaxing cruise to Alaska, a dash when her friend Kathy Copeland joins her. Kathy's sister vanished from the very same vessel on a prior voyage and though Wilhelmina often disappeared on flights of fancy, Kathy is convinced that this time is different. So this is about, I guess, um, Jessica's friend whose sister went missing and now they feel like they are being watched by someone, so that's that one. The next one is 
Trouble at High Tide. Um, after a national book tour, Jessica lands in sunny Bermuda for some well-earned relaxation. But when she arrives, the local population is a buzz of a trio of brutal murders, each bearing an eerie resemblance to the infamous Jack the Ripping's killings. Jack the Ripper killings. Hmm. Well, with the Ripper on everyone's mind, Jessica attends a lavish party at the waterfront mansion of her friend and host, Judge Thomas Betterton. And when Jessica takes a walk on the pink sanded beaches, she stumbles upon the body of one of the party goers. So, about four murders in this book. And that one's set in sunny Bermuda. The next one is The Main Mutiny. Um, this one looks slightly older one, maybe. First printing in 2005, so not that old. <gasps> They've bent the page. That is like my horror. So it says, again, set in Cabot Cove, a quiet little community, perhaps too quiet. Although the town profits from the lobster trade, tourists avoid the main street shopping district. The first annual Cabot Cove Lobster Festival promises to change all that with a three-day celebration, featuring a crafts fair, a beauty pageant, and a feast provided by the town's lobstermen. Mystery author Jessica Fletcher will also contribute to the affair by penning a future article about the lobstermen for the local newspaper. Jessica finds that the lobstermen are tight-lipped group when it comes to business. Their arrangement with the town to provide enough lobsters for the festival has caused dissension in their ranks. And when Jessica discovers one of them murdered, she must outwit a killer before she becomes the next catch of the day. So... Again, I love any of the ones set in Cabot Cove, so they just give that really small town cosy feel, which I love. Next, we have Destination Murder. This might be set on a train, maybe. Um, let's have a look. Yes, yeah, so she's on a journey through um, British Columbia, and while they're on the train, it looks like one of their companions dies, and um, as the train is going, they have to decipher the murder, so... Um, of an eerie little picture in the background there. Um, if you've ever seen Murder, She Wrote books, they all have very similar front covers, like the same photos of Angela Lansbury, just like manipulated with a different background. Um, so we're going to some of the slightly earlier ones. Um, this one is A Question of Murder. This one looks like a young actor dies um, while well, again she's attending a party so there's certain themes um, that crop up certain tropes lots of friends lots of parties um, yeah that one's probably one of the ones I'll be least interested in just because it's not as individual as a plot line the next one is gin and daggers this is one of the first ones that came out um, and again, so set in London. And again, a party happens and someone dies. So, so this uh, turns out that Jessica's mentor, Marjorie, is stabbed to death in her own bedroom. And again, this one has George Sutherland, the Scotland Yard detector, helping her out. And then the last three books are probably the oldest. So we've got Manhattans and Murder. And again, this is in New York. She's promoting her newest book in New York for Christmas and she's doing appearances and book signings and um, it says it all begins with a sidewalk Santa staring at Jessica with fear and recognition. Behind the white beard is Waldo Morse, former drug smuggler and the most notorious citizen of Jessica's hometown Cabot Cove. Jessica hasn't a clue as to how he ended up as a street corner Saint Nick but agrees to meet him the next day. She turns up only to see Santa shot dead in front of her on a busy Fifth Avenue. While the police are strangely indiffer indifferent, the press persistent and the dead man's wife uncom uncommonly evasive, Jessica, in her no-nonsense way, decides to do what she does best, strategically snoop. So that sounds quite interesting. Um, maybe one to read sort of more around Christmas time. And then these look like the first two books. You've got um, The Murder of Sherlock Holmes. And um, this is when the books were written by James Anderson. They've since changed over to um, Donald Bain. Um, and these have some pictures. So I don't know if these are direct from specific episodes. Um, or if that's just little snippets taken. Um, 
It says, it's home's all right, agreed jaunty Tweedy Jessica Fletcher as she peered at the dead man in the swimming pool. His Inverness cape and deer stalker hat were quite unmistakable. Unfortunately, his face, rearranged by the final shot, was not. That does sound familiar to one of the earlier episodes, actually. Um, and then the other one is a hooray for homicide. And um, when multi-millionaire Stephen Earle is reported lost at sea, it seems at first a tragic accident. But when mystery writer Jessica Fletcher talks to Earle's four daughters, she discovers that things are not what they seem. Soon Jessica finds herself on the trail of a cold-blooded killer. And again, this one does sound familiar. I remember there being an episode where someone died on his boat and he had three or four daughters um, in that episode, um, all sort of going around about his murder. So... Um, yeah that was all of the books I feel like I've slightly lost my voice going through them all um but I thought I'd just sort of give you a taste of what's out there in the murder she wrote world and maybe one might have sparked your, your interest to start pick up and read um so yeah I hope this video's not been too conjointed it feels like the dogs have been barking a lot and I've had to cut pieces in and out but um I hope you like this video make sure that you hit subscribe if you want to see more book videos um, or if there's a book you'd like to recommend to me, leave me a comment down below. I don't just read crime and mystery, um, very much into thriller and some non-fiction as well. So um, definitely leave me your recommendations down below. The only thing I don't do is cutesy, fancy, lovey books. So that's the only thing I, I tend not to read. Um, but yeah, make sure you like this video if you did enjoy it. And I will see you in my next one. Bye guys.